What's up, YouTube? This is Mathwiz97, and welcome to episode number 10 of my WWE 2K16 Universe Mode. We are here with another edition of Fri Thursday Night Smackdown. I'll get it right eventually. And we are kicking this one off with the Intercontinental Champion, Titus O'Neil. And real quick, I want to mention that we're speaking of champions. There is a poll over on brendanplays.com. I'll put a link down in the description below. And it's discussing our current champions, the men who have held their titles since WrestleMania. Titus O'Neil, the United States Champion Cesaro, and the WWE Champion CM Punk. Who do you think is going to have the longest title reign of the three, the three remaining WrestleMania champions? Who's it going to be? Who is going to... Who's going to be the man to take the title from said champions? Who's going to have the longest reigning champ championship reign, if I'm stuttering here? So, uh, I just want to give you guys that information. That's going to be happening, so be sure to check that out on brendanplays.com. Taking a look at the match card for this one, we have Sin Cara defeating Bo Dallas. Sheamus and Wade Bad News Barrett pick up a tag team victory over the team of Kid and Swagger. And Chris Jericho defeats Goldust. And we also saw a Divas triple threat matchup, which was won by Emma. But we're kicking this one off here tonight as it is Titus O'Neil taking on one half of the Usos in singles competition. So this is going to be a great matchup taking place here. So yes, as I was saying, the poll on BrendaPlays.com. Who do you think thus far, even if you don't feel like voting on the poll, let, let me know down in the comment section below. Who do you think has been the best of our current three reigning WrestleMania champions. Is it is it Cesaro? Is it CM Punk? Is it Titus O'Neil? Who do you think is going to have the longest title reign? Who do you think has been the most dominant champion? Who do you think will have the longest reign? I repeated that twice. It's not what I meant to say. Who do you think could perhaps take the titles from our champions? Let me know anything. Any thoughts you may have down in the comment section below or over on the page on brendanplays.com. So be sure to check those that out or, you know, leave your feedback down in the comments below. Anyways, we're taking a look at the matchup now. And we saw on main event back on episode 6, we saw a bit of a, a confrontation between Titus O'Neil and Cesaro following Cesaro's United States Championship Open Challenge to all SmackDown superstars. And, uh... There has been a little bit of a, there's been almost a bit of a back and forth war between Titus O'Neil and Cesaro now. Uh, you know, Cesaro, uh, this is a big, a big news breaking for SummerSlam, but Cesaro has announced that he will, in fact, be having a SummerSlam United States Championship Open Challenge. This is, of course, assuming Cesaro can, in fact, hold on to that United States Championship until SummerSlam if he does not lose it whenever his next open challenge may be. So, Cesaro, he's going to be issuing a U.S. title open challenge for SummerSlam. But why is this big news? This is SmackDown. You're probably wondering, why am I making this announcement on SmackDown of all places? Well, the thing is, Cesaro has thrown down the challenge to Titus O'Neil to issue an Intercontinental Championship open challenge. Cesaro, he feels as though Titus O'Neil is a paper champion that Titus O'Neil is mocking the term champion with his with his previous title reign. You know, Titus O'Neil only defending it on the pay-per-views. Cesaro, he goes out there each and every week and puts the title on the line. Cesaro, he's, uh, you know, it seems as though that little confrontation between the two has really gotten to Cesaro, and he just wants to prove that, hey, if Titus O'Neil thinks he's as good as I am, if he thinks he's just as good a champion as I am, well then, let's prove it. Put your title on the line at SummerSlam. So that's going to be interesting to see how Titus will respond. Will he, in fact, defend his Intercontinental Championship in an open challenge at SummerSlam? Well, we have to wait for a response from Titus O'Neil. We'll see what Titus has to say to that. But yes, that is big news for SummerSlam. Perhaps two open challenges in the making for our championships, both on Raw and SmackDown. Both of our singles championships not the major championships but i gotta say just because cesaro and titus o'neil aren't world champions they're still damn good champions i mean whether or not titus o'neil issues this open challenge he has had a dominant reign as 
Intercontinental Champ. I mean, let's face it, he has downed the likes of Ryback, who is one of our top reign reigning champions to this point. He has defeated Goldust, Tyson Kidd, Darren Young. Titus O'Neil has done a very good job as the champ, and even in non-title matches, defeating the likes of DDP, Rick Rude, the Honky Tonk Man, I mean, the list goes on and on. Titus O'Neil has been very impressive as the Intercontinental Champion, whether or not he goes out there every week and issues an open challenge. And now look at this, Titus O'Neil, he's going to prove it again here tonight, why he is the best Intercontinental Champion in history as he hooks the leg, three count, off the clash of the Titus. And just like that, O'Neal scores the win over Jey Uso here tonight. And again, Titus O'Neal goes out there and proves that he is a fighting champion. He is a dominant force here on SmackDown. And you know, in Titus O'Neal's mind, he doesn't have to go out there each and every week to defend his Intercontinental Championship to prove that he is the best champion in the current day in history. Titus O'Neil, he is he believes he is the real deal. And well, who who can who can doubt him really? I mean he goes out there each and every week and he gets it done. At the end of the day, Titus O'Neil is still the Intercontinental Champion, and that is something that you can't deny. That is a fact. As now we're gonna move on to the second matchup of the evening. Of course, later on we're gonna be seeing Big E of the New Day taking on Connor of the Ascension. A little bit of a preview for our tag team title match set to take place at SummerSlam. But tonight, we're gonna be seeing some cruiserweight action, some high flying wrestling here tonight, as we have the one and only Rey Mysterio taking on the returning Adrian Neville, the man that gravity forgot, taking on the biggest underdog in WWE history, WWE's biggest little man. It is Rey Mysterio versus Adrian Neville here tonight. And I gotta say, this is a matchup, this is a fantasy matchup, if I ever saw one. I mean, just think about it. Rey Mysterio, a former World Heavyweight Champion, think of all that he's accomplished throughout his career. And in Universe Mode, he's been right up there at the top at points of his career. I mean, at one point, back at the Royal Rumble, he was competing against Randy Orton and Mark Henry for the World Heavyweight Championship. And then Adrian Neville, well, you know, you could say that Adrian Neville has a very similar, you know, he, his type of wrestling ability, his type of style parallels that of Rey Mysterio. I mean, just think about all the groundbreaking things that Rey Mysterio could do back when he made his debut. And then you take a look at Neville and just the, the, the ability, the pure wrestling ability that Neville has, his high-flying ability, his speed, very much like that of a Rey Mysterio back in the early days of his career. Oh, what a kick there, a backflip kick by Neville, now delivers a kick to the gut. And here comes Adrian Neville, a drop kick, and he stuns Rey Mysterio there, taking him down. Adrian Neville looks like he's gained the upper hand early on in this one as, oh, drop toe hold, taking Neville down, dropping him on his face. And now here's Mysterio looking to go to work on the leg of Neville. And obviously I'd have to say if it comes down to a pure battle of speed, of, you know, of endurance in this type of a matchup, Rey Mysterio, you know, that this is where age is gonna start to take its toll on Mysterio. I believe if it comes down to pure speed, Neville is going to have the advantage. So Mysterio, he's gotta take a bit more of a technical approach, try to wear Neville down, take out the legs, not allow Neville to fly around that ring. If you cut off the legs, you cut off his ability to move, his ability to fly. And Mysterio, not to say that Mysterio wants, wants a slow-paced matchup, but if it comes down, if he has to try to keep up with Neville, I don't think he has that ability anymore to really keep up with somebody who's quite possibly one of the fastest men currently on the WWE roster in Adrian Neville. I don't think Mysterio has that ability still to keep up with a man who is just at, oh my god, look at Neville! Neville, a springboard shooting star press to the outside and see, it's just things like that that Neville brings to the table. That's what got him to the dance. His ability, oh, and look at that. 
almost mocking Corey Graves there. A bit of a, well, what you can do, I can do better. Drop kicking Mysterio face first into the apron. A move that has become something of a trademark from Corey Graves. Well, Adrian Neville, he's going to deliver it back as Neville back inside the ring. Of course, these two, st these two men, they're going to keep this matchup in the ring as much as possible. That is the type of style that benefits them. But it's not just that the ropes that they can use to fly around, you know, they can use the barricades, the announce tables, the steel steps, whatever have you. They can turn just about anything into a weapon. Their own body is a weapon. As Mysterio off the top, Moonsault right there. And now Mysterio with the cover. One, two, no. Kick out by Neville at two. Adrian Neville, of course, gearing up for his match, his grudge match against Corey Graves at SummerSlam, takes Mysterio down with a head scissors. And Corey Graves, oh wait, look at this. Beautiful maneuver right there, a corkscrew moonsault, and now a cover, two, no, another kick out by Mysterio. And just look at that, Neville just a standing corkscrew moonsault. He didn't need the ropes, he didn't need to springboard or anything. That's just pure ability right there, as now Mysterio takes him down with a head scissors. Mysterio now delivering Delivering it back to Neville. And now dragging him away from the ropes. Avoiding a potential rope break as he kicks him square in the jaw. Rey Mysterio, look at this. Now going to the top rope. Mysterio's looking to fly. Here we go, diving splash. And he hooks the leg. One, two, three. No, kick out by Neville at two and a half. As this is what we expect to see from these two men. High flying, fast paced action counter from Neville as Mysterio was looking for something big. Wait a minute! A roll up by Neville! But that's a rope break. Mysterio's hands reaching under that bottom rope to force the break. Big knee! Right to the skull of Mysterio. And here's Neville now. He is just on fire, folks. Inverted Frankensteiner by Neville! And Mysterio, well that is, you know, good luck coming back from that, Ray. Adrian Neville just laid him out. And Mysterio's out cold. I think he's out, I think he's unconscious. And Neville to the top rope. Set your DVRs, your watch later playlists, as there's the red arrow. And that is a thing of beauty. Hooks the leg. Two, three, there we go. Adrian Neville with the red arrow finishes off Rey Mysterio here tonight. What a match between those two men. But evidently, in the end, it comes down to Neville. The youth triumphs over experience tonight. Adrian Neville gets the job done, and he sends a message to Corey Graves that he's still, you know, despite the fact the damage that Corey Graves did to the leg of Neville, Neville, he can still fly around the, that ring, perhaps even better than ever. Adrian Neville is back, and he means business. So now we move on to the main event of this episode of Friday Night Smackdown. Thursday Night Smackdown, god dang it, every time. Uh, but here in Seattle, Washington, it is the main event. It is one third of the new day taken on one half of the Ascension. It is the powerhouse, Big E, taken on the Ascension's powerhouse, Connor. This is going to be one heck of a main event here for Smackdown tonight. Big E, The New Day, they have been on quite the winning streak as of late, really turning themselves around. I mean, think about The New Day. Back in January, February, March, they just really were struggling to, to get together as a tag team. They just, the, the, the connection wasn't there. There was just something, just a block, a mental block that was just like preventing them from just becoming that cohesive tag team, just becoming that that unit that you need to be. They just weren't, they just hadn't developed that connection yet, and they really were struggling, losing match after match, but, you know, the past several months, the New Day have really turned themselves around, and now they could perhaps be the next breakout tag team here in the WWE. But speaking of breakout tag teams, you're looking at the biggest breakout tag team in the history to date of Universe Mode. It is the Ascension. And, I mean, you gotta say, you want to talk about a way to break into the division. How about making your debut, and in the span of two months, winning the tag team titles from the Wyatt family, who are tied with Ryback for the longest reigning 
championship title run at 192 days. I mean, that is one heck of a, a record to topple, but the Ascension have done that. They conquered the Wyatt family, and now the Ascension continue to ride that wave of momentum that has brought them so forcefully to the top of the tag team division since they made their debut. It has just been, the Ascension have been unstoppable since making their debut. But the New Day, they have they managed to pick up a tag team victory over the Ascension a few weeks ago on SmackDown, and look at that. Just a pure showcase of strength right there from Big E with that back body drop. He just, he tossed Connor like 15 feet in the air like a rag doll. Just ridiculous amount of strength from Big E, but Connor, you know, he'll definitely retaliate. He'll be able to return the favor with his own power and aggressiveness. As back and forth now, these two men trading strikes. As now it appears as though Connor starting to gain the upper hand here. So yes, the Ascension, they made quite a statement as a tag team. You know, that's one thing that the New Day can't really say that they've been able to do. They weren't, you know, it took them quite a while to just gel together as a tag team, but we have the Ascension here, who had that history down in NXT. They had been working together so that by the time they made it to the main roster, by the time they debuted to Universe Mode, just like that, they clicked, and it really didn't take them long at all to jump to the top of the WWE. They've done just that. And Connor especially, you know, we saw a few weeks ago on Monday Night Raw picking up a victory a singles victory over the world heavyweight champion Dolph Ziggler. I mean, Connor, really just another big statement uh, to add to the pedigree of the Ascension. I mean, not only did they become tag team champions, but they just continue to ride this wave of momentum that they've just, you know, really ever since they debuted, it has just been one giant tsunami of momentum for the Ascension, and they, ca they just cannot be stopped. The New Day, you know, I want to root for them. I want to, I really, like, after all the, the hardships the New Day have had to endure, I want to see them succeed. I want to see them become the new tag team champions. And I'm sure the WWE Universe can agree that, the, the you know, the New Day, they, they've paid their dues. It's about time that they reap their reward. But, the you know, the Ascension, that's going to be one tough cookie to try to crack. And I, I don't know. I just don't know if the New Day are capable of it. But that's what we're going to find out. This matchup here tonight can definitely give us a bit of a, an inside clue, a little hint as to which team has the upper hand going into the pay-per-view. We've seen the New Day defeat the Ascension in tag team action once, but can they do it again when the titles are on the line? Because when the titles are up for grabs, there is, you know, you're going to be facing completely different people. I mean competing in a non-title match as opposed to a title match, big time counter from Connor with that spine buster. But when you're competing for the titles, as the champion, you have all the more reason to be motivated, all the more reason to try to pick up the victory because now you have everything to lose and basically nothing to gain in these title matches. If it's a non-title match, it's an exhibition. Really, it doesn't matter who wins or loses, you could you could argue, you could make that argument. Uh, but as the contenders, you know, you have to go out there every single night with the same amount of intensity to succeed. But if you're the champion, honestly, you, you can slack off a little bit in those non-title matches. Not to say that that's what a great champion does. A great champion goes out there each and every week and gives it their best as if they were the challenger. And I would, I would you know, the Ascension, not to say that... You know, I'd have to say the Ascension definitely have that presence about them 24-7, but I don't know. Do you, could you really expect to see them at their best when the titles are not on the line? I'm not too sure about that, as we see here. That's another thing, though, as we see Big E manages to get the shoulder up at 2. But especially when you come in, you make your debut, and you make it to the top that quickly. Arrogance can certainly take full effect. Uh, you know, it really kind of shows the character of our champions. You know, the fact that they debuted and so quickly achieved success. Whereas the New Day, they've had to undergo those hardships. They've had to pay their dues. And oh, wait a minute. Connor's in trouble. Big E's got him up. Oh, and he takes him down with a big ending. 
Big E planting Connor, and now off the ropes, big time splash just for added impact as he hooks the leg. Two, three, there you have it. Big E picks up a major victory here tonight over Connor. And again, the new day, they gain the upper hand once more and just continue to show that, you know, the Ascension, they may be one of the most dominant forces in universe mode, but the New Day, they can hang with them. They're right up there as well. You can't count out the New Day. Thank you for watching this episode of Universe Mode, ladies and gentlemen, and keep on YouTubing.